Welcome back. We're back, bitch. Tim, you a hot Cheeto lady now? No, I'm a regular Cheetos guy. I'll never be a hot Cheeto lady. What's the earliest that you've ever eaten Cheetos on public? Don't ask me that fucking question, bro. Except, dude, 7 a.m. <laughs> walking to Catholic school eating Dipsy Doodles every day. Mm-hmm. Just getting fat as fuck. G- knowing, knowing that the only contribution my mom ever made to my family was working at a food uh, distributor, and I knew that I would come home to a case of Pop Tarts once a week. Mm-hmm. A case, dude, not a box. Mm-hmm. That's a good I'm novel. saying minimum 12 boxes of Pop Tarts, maybe double boxes. How many could you eat in a day? Don't ask me that either, dude. I've, I've said goodbye to a box in a day. <laughs> <laughs> Tubbs, how are you, buddy? I'm good, guys. I'm good. This, uh, this is something fucking else. I got earmuffs oh, on. Oh, man. Go. Let me tell you something. <laughs> no. I, got, I got earmuffs on. This shit is weird. I can hear myself talking. I'm a little creeped the fuck out, right? It sounds like we're in a hallway. It's, this is the long but winter look, for our haters, dude. Keep your ears warm. <laughs> dude, I'm going to bring everybody back. <laughs> a couple years ago. Don't do it to in, him. On a corner property in West Philadelphia, bro. <laughs> then we end up in Mike's house. We're on the fucking sunroom on the back of the house. Sometimes there'd be eight fucking people back there. You got me, fucking Jake. You got Candle Run. You got eight people back there. The thing feels like feels like it's gonna fall off of the back of the fucking house. Blowing out the minute. windows with farts, dude. How oh good my... for podcasting would it have been if the floor collapsed while we were on there? <laughs> that fucking thing. like a gay dance club, <laughs> dude. And and here the fuck we are, bro. This is the wow. house that Dubs built, right? The gay here, dance club. Yo, Can incredible. You believe it? A gayer it, dance club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Incredible. I couldn't be this fucking great. prouder. Oh, I love Thanks, you, Tubbs. You know what I mean? Everybody's trending upwards, moving in the right fucking direction. Every six months or whatever it is, I come back, this shit's better, and then it's better, oh, and then dude, it's fucking better. Don't you hate when you run into a boy, like one of your boys that you only see every so often, and every time you see him, it's just like, yeah, dude, still work. my fucking job's getting yeah. as fuck. And you see him six months later, and it's like, yo, what's up, dude? Have you thought about leaving that job? Yet? He's like... My job's just so gay, I can't even fucking leave oh, it. It's... Dude, I fucking hate them. Didn't oh, you tell man. me you had to cut somebody out for doing that? I, I got someone teetering on the brink. Okay. That's what I'll say. All right. I don't want, I don't want to hear that shit. If I see you and I come dap you up and I go, bro, it's good to see you. What's up? And it, it, by the way, it's a miracle if I remember a detail about someone else's life. I can't even remember my own thoughts. If I remember that your job stinks and that you had like an idea for like making something better for yourself and then I catch you six, eight. 11 months later, and you're just like, ah, yeah, shit's still just fucking gay, dude. Then, I'm sorry, man. The next conversation's not going to be as warm. What's your friend's problem, fat wife? No. No, absolutely not. Some... I, I, think, I, don't, I think this is a common affliction. I think most a lot of people get on the hamster wheel, and then they see it moving. They go, okay, at least the hamster wheel's fucking moving. Mm-hmm. And then it's hard to dismount. And, I, you know, a guy in the chat said he, he got fired for making anti-Semitic remarks about his boss. <laughs> Okay, you got in trouble, you got yelled at, but dude, onward and upward, you're out of that shitty job. The boss wasn't even Jewish, by the way. I was reading the chat the whole time. The boss wasn't even Jewish, he was Catholic. And this guy said something, I, I think probably in jest, I guess, about the capital J's. And they said, take a fucking hike, mister. Tim, do you want to know where the one time is where it may be appropriate to use anti-Semitic stuff on the job site? I'm dying to know. During training? We're training. Okay. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Everything's getting better here, Tubbs. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were, Mike, I thought, I thought you were going to say when you're applying for workers' comp. Uh, yeah, that's very good as well. What do you mean as well? That's a hundred times better. I like better. mine, Tim. I like mine as you're well. You're saying workers' comp is in out of the ballpark. Compared, what was the first one? Training? That's phoned in, dude. Uh, that's, that's not funny. your best. No, it isn't. That's not your best, dude. I you're like sitting it. on your hands right now. All right. I'm sticking with training. Mike's jokes are way worse we're, than we're, the hallway, bro. Danny, <laughs> we're titling the episode Workers' Comp. <laughs> yes, we are. German is not illegal. All right, Workers' Comp hyphen training. <laughs> Tubbs, do you have an anti-Semitic pun for the job site? <laughs> <laughs> So that, that stuff flies on job sites, dude. Especially, <laughs> I mean, when you got a bunch Why of motherfuckers. Why you guys churching it up? Just yeah. say it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that, that, that stuff flies. I mean, we know what Jews are. We, we're pretty, you know, <laughs> stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason. I mean, they pretty much nail it. And and I think I think Jews are the ones who are, are, are proud of you know, the stereotypes more than anybody. You're telling me that uh, your average blue-collar blue guy holding a shovel on the job site, he's not dreading having to deal with Oshowitz? <laughs> That's very good. Let's go with Oshowitz now, Danny. 
<laughs> You're saying that, that Oshowitz isn't a nightmare in the back of any general contractor's mind? Come on, man. Nah, not about? if you took your OSHA 30 wits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice try. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay, admirable. At least you went for it. Yeah. Mike microwaved a fart and tried to feed it to us. Brother, only one person on this podcast can fucking butcher puns. And he's sitting right here, baby. Anyway, welcome back to Debbie. Thank you guys for being with us. We're, we're, we're having a heck of a time. I, I think my favorite criticism that I've ever read of myself online was somebody saying, uh, he's like, yeah, man, I can't get in the rain. The guy's like two for ten on jokes every episode. That's tough. That's tough. I've had to deal with people calling me an annoying, unfunny tryhard, and I go, okay, man. Thanks. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I think too, man. You can't even hurt my feelings. <laughs> so I, I, I got my first one. I, you Tiffany, got a hater. Yeah, Tiffany found a Tiffany Cena on like uh, every YouTube. This motherfucker. The one he said he wanted to fight me. Uh, the other yeah. one said I'm the worst person on earth. <laughs> Whoa! And that's, I said to Tiffany, I said, you know what he needs? He needs to get wrapped in these loving fucking arms, pop. Oh, Let me bust oh, one in that man. little buddy yours <laughs> and put you in a good mood and give you something to look forward to. You fucking Wait, dork. Now are you Yo. are you are you threatening to make love to this guy? I'm threatening to make love to this guy because he probably needs it so bad. He probably needs to just get wrapped up in these loving fucking arms. We'll, yeah. we'll be best friends by the end of it, jerk off. But it's funny. I didn't know. Notice it didn't bother me, but if you think my wife doesn't always have a razor blade under her tongue, you're fucking nuts. Bro. <laughs> as soon as she read it, she was like, yo, you see this motherfucker talking shit? I was like, no. She starts pulling her hair back. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> Puts what? her Tims in what her sweatpants on. IP dresses. Yo. <laughs> yo. Last night I was taking Mike to the Sixers game, and we were just talking about uh, people just talking shit. He's like, do people ever say me things about you? I was like, yeah, I'll see it on the internet sometimes. He's like, what kind of things do they say? I was like, uh, mostly huh. unfunny Your son's faggot. gay. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what? Oh, really? That's like, yeah, on the internet, they they call adult men unfunny faggots, man, because, hey, man, to each his own. Yeah. And, dude, don't get me wrong. There's a part of me that is an unfunny faggot. No doubt. Yeah. I try to keep it under 50%, dude. I can't always. <laughs> I'm only human. Brother. But inside all of us is an unfunny try-hard faggot. My unfunny annoying. faggot meter is always red line. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> I can't queer you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just kidding around. That's fun stuff. Mm -hmm. We just yeah. have fun, man. I just went. Um, well, go ahead, Tubbs. Yeah, I don't want to interrupt you. The the, the love from the bubs. Uh, everywhere I go, and and even Tiffany, like, dude, you fucking guys are incredible. Now the best part about this whole scene you guys got going, this whole fucking mm. studio and everything, is all these new fucking friends, bro. Now oh, you yeah. got fucking Naeem and Drew Montana in here and shit. I was hanging with them, the the do rag show. We were like the last ones fucking up. All the bubs are out. I wound up sitting with Uncle fucking Ellis because uh, Ellis go, is the man. Yo, Uncle Ellis, the best laugh in the world, mm -hmm. dude. Ah, 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 fucking <laughs> just you can hear him through the whole fucking place. Um, Sounds Uncle like Ellis, you were making love to him, Annette, too. Dude, the four of us sat at a table together, not really knowing each other, just a bunch of bubs, had a fucking blast all night. Like, this is what's so cool about Onward and Upward with this shit is all the new people you guys are bringing in, every fucking thing I go to, every event, it's nothing but love. People are like, oh, I heard you. I met McCusker for the first time, met your boy Ian for the first time. Like, I'm loving I'm loving the, the circle. Dude. The circle just you've getting got bigger real, and bigger. You've got real... Um... I don't know, like key to the city energy. So like you you are a guy that should be walking around people like you know you should be able to shake every hand in a room on your way to the back of it where the booth is waiting for you. That's the kind of guy you are. Yeah, that, you got key bumps to the city energy. Yeah. Right? That's, <laughs> that's the most important thing I've done to be successful in life is become best friends with every single person mm -hmm. I've ever fucking met. Like yeah. that that's going a lot further. Like you have know you, what I mean? Have you been to any ribbon cutting ceremonies yet? Dude, so I I went to some fancy silver shovel fucking uh <laughs> cutting the ribbon to the six houses we're building over in west philly and like stood there in a white heart hat Whoa. for a second yeah, you should have been cool. given the golden plunger yeah. by the developers <laughs> wow Dude. It was, uh, you know, I, I went up with all the city work and shit like that. It's a bunch of, like, future politicians building fucking, you know, affordable homes and shit like that. But Mr. Tubbs is making bread, baby. That's, damn. Woo -woo. That's the, the best part about the city work and stuff like that is not some short Italian guy, like, lying to you about a bank draw. Like, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, the money's coming. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, government-funded shit. There's not just some fucking dude. Yeah, that's, that's guilt-free, overcharged no, paper. Guilt-free. And that's... Listen, reasonable rates. We don't use, we don't say things like overcharge around here, uh, you know. And again, the whole Jew thing, you know. <laughs> they got away with words, baby. Damn. Wow. We. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Tubbs, I got to ask you, man. The second I see you, I want to ask you where you've been getting pussy. 
because I know you're all over the place. Every casino in the tri-state area has been porked in. There's been casinos in Cleveland that have been fucked in by you. Yeah, we got Cleveland. We got Dover. Uh, <laughs> Dover's a weird yeah, one. Anything you want to plug? Where, yeah. <laughs> yeah. where are you porking your yeah. wife? So I didn't, I've been scared. <laughs> so I'm not even going to lie. I, I don't know if I'm getting uh, fucking Coca older. Springs, uh, first week of March. <laughs> yeah. It's always it's always John. And the last couple times I've been scared. I bowed out the last few times. Why? Uh, I don't know, dude. She's nuts. She's getting earlier and earlier. I'm like, Tim, it's <laughs> fucking 7.30 p.m. Like, we, we used to always fucking wind up doing it like 4.30 in the morning, 5 a.m. <clears throat> Nobody's around. But, man, she's getting drunk earlier and earlier. She's getting ballsier and ballsier. And the last couple times I bowed, I got scared. We were just oh, in Atlantic man. City this weekend. And, man, it's crazy. Uh, you know, 13 years, I'm still so in love. I could still bust in like eight seconds if I want to. I could still stick that thing in there, <laughs> barely move a muscle, and just let it rip. We, uh, I had to blame the view in our corner room, right? We got the corner room at the Borgata, <laughs> and oh my God, I fucking busted instantly. And I was like, you know, the view got me looking out over the fucking swamps of New Jersey and a bunch of windmills in the distance. And that fucking ass, boy. Oh my God. <laughs> I've been I've been big on the lay on the stomach, beating the cheeks from behind dude, Atlantic shit lately. City, dude. Yeah. Sorry, babe, the smell got <laughs> me. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I call it a bit of beach algae. You know what it does to me. <laughs> dude, I was thinking about that horse that used to jump off the pier here and I just got emotional and busted. Sorry, babe, the uh, moonlight bounced off of that hooker's knife. <laughs> Woo! Sorry. <laughs> Yo, it's like sometimes I show up ready to crush the puss. Like sometimes I'm fucking, I'm down. Like I'm ready to fucking beat a pussy up. But sometimes I just, I, I still go back to like, oh my God, like uh, it's, it's so good. I, I can, you know, I can really get them out there pretty quick sometimes, dude. Are you sure I'm good enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> How did I get so lucky? <laughs> Hell yeah. I would love it. Like, if I let a dude bust my cheeks, I would love it if he busted early. Yeah. No. How big of a compliment is that? I can imagine. Especially 13 years later, he's still busting mm -hmm. early. I mean, you got you got something going on mm -hmm. there. <laughs> I've always said, like, the sign of a good restaurant is the second people take a bite, they throw up at the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> and my wife. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I like when you when 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 you're when you're busting with your girl, and you act like a a dog who's eaten undercooked chicken, mm -hmm. and you just ugh, silently puke. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. That's that's how my wife knows things are going good. That's us, Lady in the Tramping. I wish your dick made puking sounds when you nutted. Oh. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't know. Not my puking sounds, dude. No, you don't want to hear this. You don't want no part of this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I let them rip. I'm, I'm a professional I guess, puker as well. Dude, I'll, I'll, you know how like you get like minor heaves before you actually puke, and it's mm. just like just let your body convulse. I'll, I'll like try to resist it, so I'll be like, huh, huh, <laughs> every single time, dude. When I, when I used to party with my boy uh, Steve, not Steve, Steve, but another Steve. Mm -hmm. His move was he refused to leave the bar to go outside or the bathroom to throw up. He would just take an empty beer bottle and vomit it to the beer bottle yeah. like he was taking a sip. Yeah. My my sister had a Chinese friend who would do that, a Chinese party girlfriend, and they would go out to bars and stuff, and she would puke on the dance floor just, like, into her cocktail <laughs> and just put it down somewhere. Into a cocktail? Oh. Yeah, whatever, pint glass, oh whatever was God, nearby. Dude. She's like, Bleh. And I was always so jealous. <laughs> I can't even puke in my own home. And this little fucking Asian lady was, I mean, doing it on the fly. Yeah, Razzle that's... dazzle, dude. That's and one. Asians have and one puking abilities. <laughs> <laughs> I got a base up, dude. I might pull something. I let it rip. I drink a lot. Mm -hmm. So throwing up 16, <laughs> 17 Miller High Lifes. I mean, you better fucking, you know, mm -hmm. get your core going. Yeah, for sure. Like a sumo wrestler, you yeah. throw you throw salt in. You... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I definitely yeah, let it rip. I'm a, I'm a puker too. I'm like a into the morning hours puker. Like I'm good all night. Like we're out getting fucked up. I'll be cool. You're like see, a camel. Yeah, you'll see me leave, but you know, four forty four in the morning, I'm waking up. I'm puking. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's a white trash camel, yeah. dude. Dude, you get them demons out. Oh, uh, by the way, I gotta, he's never gonna hear this, but I have to sh shout out dear sweet young Caleb at Bear Creek Resort. I dropped, I went snowboarding for the first time and I, my pocket was unzipped and my phone fell out on the mountain. Oh. And I had no idea where, so I went up back, I sat in the ski lift going, oh man, I'm getting my phone. And I was, I was separated from, I went with uh, my brother and our sons 
and Lucy, and I was separated from them. So I was like, I can't even find the people I came here with. And I can marry her. probably call me. She's so mad. I'm not even answering my phone. And I'm like going up the ski lift, and I'm looking at the mountain as I'm going up, like, is that a phone? And I get to the top, and I was like, has anybody seen an iPhone up here? And no one has seen it. And I, and I snowboard back down, and I'm just eating shit because I'm looking at the ground the whole time. And I get to the bottom, and I'm certain that I, I traced my path, and I didn't see it. But then I went to customer service and I was like, do you guys have a Wilson phone? And they were like, yes, we do. I was like, is anyone turned in my phone 13 Pro? And she goes, no, but uh, if you give me your phone number, why don't we try calling it? I was like, oh, you're so smart. I didn't even think of doing that. And so she called it and she goes, hi, this is Megan with Mary Queen Resort. Did you find this phone? And then 30 seconds later, this 14-year-old boy walks in. He goes, hey, are you the guy that lost his phone? <laughs> And I was like, yes, dude, oh my God, you're the best ever. And it was him and his buddy. I gave him 20 bucks and they turned around to leave and he was like, oh my God, dude, we got $20. <laughs> so Caleb, if somehow this message reaches you, thank you for saving me probably an hour and a half of paperwork. You're the man. <laughs> yeah, snowboarding's tough. You guys ever go snowboarding? I went snow tubing one time. Tubing's and, not the same. Uh, well, so that was it. Touch. So I, yeah, I, went, I, I was a passing. kid, right? So we go snow tubing, and some dickhead left his bag there, so we stole that shit. And there was a di- yeah, they're talking this man days. iPhones. We, yeah, we like hung back, and I was I'm never the bad kid, but I just was like you well, saw I, you saw I was just like riding. No, I was with the other two kids I was with were like yo, we're gonna get that shit. You're so and I was just like riding the fuck out. And, no, uh, this was a polite resort, yo, not that fucking wigger was, bullshit that you, you show know, up on a yellow bus to. It was a diss man. I got the diss man out the deal, and it was like two Game Boys and some jeans and shit we threw in the woods. But yeah, that's my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my fucking You guys are wigger story. hyenas. Yeah, man. Just I was, picking at his I was car. A kid. I regret, you know, I would never do some shit like that now as an adult, you know, but. Yeah. Are you above uh, tubing now, Tim? Yeah, there's no going back. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it's a shame because I love sledding. I love, I love snow tubing. I, obviously, very fun. But dude, once you get on the board, <laughs> yeah, once, I, you, I, once, you, once you shred gnar, there's no going back to the tube. Yeah, but you, see, you're still in shape. I feel like I'm too out of shape. I'm old. actually still. In, this was Friday we went. I'm still in in pain on my entire body. I have I have what looks like a sluts devil tail tattoo going from the Ooh. top of my tailbone all the way down the back of my leg from just wiping out on my cheeks all day. Actually, I might need asshole repair surgery, brother. You need to take that thing to Sturgis. <laughs> <laughs> but like you're you're in pain you're like black, i black might weekend. i might die out there like I'm, no you know I, I, mean? I saw some fat guys getting yeah. after it oh. face planting. everybody's face planting the whole time <laughs> it's dude it's it's horrific actually here's what might fuck you about being big i feel like i was bigger than most of the people there and every time everybody fell it's like huh uh and you get a little bit of snow in your face every time i fell like my my legs went up in the air. I did like a upside down helicopter motion. It was a train wreck every single every single time I crashed, and I felt like a fool. But dude, it's so worth it. What dude? Once you once you get to the point where you're gonna and stop yeah, like that's that, quite badass. Oh, yeah. yeah, you'll get one good one right before it's time to leave. The rest of the day, you're like, I'm gonna stop. Shh, oh. face first into the snow every single fucking time. Yeah, I would I would end up drunk early and not really. On the ski and there's just much. yeah, very cool nine year olds just like blowing past you, making you look like a bigger <laughs> dickhead. Oh, I can't wait to go back. It was so fucking fun. Don't you think you'll ever give snowboarding a shot? No, I'm, <laughs> uh, man, I'd like I'm to get two, you on the slopes. No. I don't know, dude. I'm not trying to blow a fucking ACL or something. Yeah, that's what you know I, what I mean. Yeah. That's what gets me. Like you know, I got insurance and shit, but I'm not trying to be laid the fuck up. Oh, I'm, man. I'm, I'm scared. To, I'm not a thrill seeker. You know what I mean? You guys want to go tubing down the river again? I would like to be invited to those trips. I see oh, yeah, that we'll shit going down with dubs and all. That's right up my alley. You know what's fun to imagine is you coming to the mountain and saying, I'm not fucking doing I'm just going to drink high lugs yeah. and maybe tube a little bit. But then you get to the top and you accidentally step onto one ski and then you go all the way. You're like, oh! <laughs> you like go through like a snow bank and you, like you end up looking like a snowman and there's like people's clothes end up on you somehow and you get to the bottom. <laughs> that would be pretty cool is if you accidental fat snowman all the way down a hill. <laughs> yeah. We can make that happen. National Lampoon fucking movie or something, yeah. Don't now, don't you want to come? <laughs> yeah, so uh, someone puts a fucking carrot in your face, and that's the thing. I would have to. I, I would be easily talked into snowboarding because skiing's fucking gay, right? Skiing's I mean, I'm pretty not fucking skiing. gay, man. You know I mean? It's for old, the only people that were yeah. skiing were very old ladies. Yeah, and I'm not. And tiny children, fucking in and out, Ti- in and out the whole way down. T- tiny children and extremely old ladies were pizza all the way down. Yeah. That's gay, dude. Humiliating I'll re- stuff. I'll be back at the lodge. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I didn't even know there was a lodge. I didn't know. I don't. I didn't. I don't know anything about snow culture. The lodge where people were just sit, posted up on tables with like. Where'd you go, Jack Frost? No, uh, Bear Creek, I believe. But you go in there. They they got like picnics set up. Like you, I didn't know you're supposed to do that kind of cool shit. I thought you were supposed to sneak away from your wife in while the sun isn't out yet, have fun for four hours, and then go home and like kind of be useless and get yelled at. I didn't know it could be like a family affair where you're eating good food and stuff the whole time. Did you have a special outfit designed for that trip? Of course not, dude. That would be the least thing <laughs> like me thing. Ever. Like being prepared for like having snow pants. I didn't have those as a kid, let alone as an adult. I was there in Wrangler work pants that I bought from Walmart on the way there. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, dude? I don't know, buddy. I can picture you in one of those those full length snowsuits that oh, changes yeah. color upon the temperature. Oh, that'd be so dude, cool. I was just thinking how sweet the gear is. Like yeah. the, this the snow world gear. No, I'm I'm lame, dude. I'm not cool. I'm not cool enough for that stuff. Like, Plus, they'd call me a poser. Yeah. It'd be all completely fresh, not dinged up, and they'd be like, all right, man, cool jumpsuit. Just run it over a few times. Mm. <laughs> Throw it in the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that'd be sick. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'm with snow culture. No? Nah, I don't think it's for me. You know, There's casinos up. I like casinos, but mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think I'm with it. You can smash in an igloo. Yeah, <laughs> I would smash it. Think about I'm, that. Oh, so all right, here you go. I, there, I do got one. So we left a, uh, we left a wedding, and I think we we got mistaken. Somebody must have thought we were stealing their catalytic converters, but we were fucking, <laughs> and we pulled over in in like Cheltenham one time. Uh, this isn't that long ago. It's probably the last time you made me think fucking in the igloo. Where's the last weird place that we banged? We left this wedding. It's it's real late. We pull off in like Cheltenham somewhere, and the the funny part is I put the seat all the way back, and we start messing around. And then it was like, go in the back seat. Well, we went to get in the back seat, and like, I never put my bird away. I'm like holding my bird. I get out the, out the driver door. I go to get into the back. And you the, get out of the car. You try to get out of the car, drink? and I go into the back, and the seat's still back. I jumped on the lean back seat. <laughs> I got all crunched up and shit like that. Somebody's lights went on. They hit their car alarm, like boop boop, like it makes the noise. I think they thought we were trying to steal our catalytic converter. Yeah, Damn, that's, that's crazy. That was my last one. And this then, is how I changed flat tires. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a half a mile from a school, so now you're a registered sex <laughs> yeah. offender, dude. That's crazy stuff. But I, I'm gonna put igloo on the list. I like mm -hmm. that. Maybe I do like snow culture. Yeah, snow culture is sick. It's yeah. fucking gnarly, dude. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to go back. I can picture you aside from my butt getting ruined. Is it ruined, dude? My butt is ruined. It's dude, I I can't tell you enough, man. My ass cheeks are. I sprained them. I sprained both ass cheeks, mm -hmm. and my hole might have been filled. <laughs> I'm done <laughs> And every time you go down You go okay There's gonna be a point Either when I stop at the end Or five times on the way down Where I'm going to experience Falling and hurting myself And then you just keep doing it It, you, it reminded me of being a kid Think about going to one of those doctors That repairs chimp attack faces <laughs> And see what you can do with your butt I'm gonna receive the world's first ass transplant <laughs> Oprah's gonna lift up your underwear Oh <laughs> The, the tailbone. So beautiful. <laughs> you fall on that tailbone a couple times. That's, mm, that's the whole. Yeah, it yeah, That fucks you up. That shit hurt. That never heals, man. Mm -hmm. I used to work at a fucking home where a guy would have to get this wound by his tailbone packed like every week or so because it just wouldn't heal. So they would just fill it with fucking gauze and do the best that they the could to repair it. I'm try spackle at that point. <laughs> if it's just not going to close up, you close it up. You ever think about spackle on uh, a wound, Tub? <laughs> You put that wherever, man. Don't worry about it. No. <laughs> Throw it at the screen. Yeah. There's fucking five screens. I can't wait. Look, I, dude, we're going to have you drinking nine beers on the clock right now. <laughs> yeah. This is the best. So I got off tomorrow, dude. I I, I took the day. This mm. is 3 o'clock on a fucking Tuesday. Oh, it's the it, best, man. Yeah, it's the best for you guys. It's, it's for the it's, working it's, man. It's a tough sell for tubs. <laughs> it's for the but, working man. <laughs> but this one worked out. The, the Sunday evening was perfect because I would take off Monday. I'm 12 beers a podcast, dude. I got a pretty steady streak going. <laughs> and I usually drink about... Anywhere from four to eight before I get here. But uh, I Ubered here. I went and dropped my truck off at my shop. Gave the guys at work for me, like, specific instructions, like, pull this truck here, whatever. And I'm hoping I'm too fucked up to go back and get my truck. And I just Ubered right home after this. But I took home, I took off tomorrow, you know, your fucking Tuesday, 3 o'clock podcast. Don't put that on I'm us. just saying, who knows? Nah, nah, who knew nah, how nah, this could go? I could wind up anywhere after this. No, sorry you're dipping so, into your PTO, yeah. dude. That's not on us, though. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dipping into PTO. Absolutely not. It's Tiffany's birthday tomorrow, so oh. we're going to go to... Uh, Concha Hawking, and we're going to get fucked up. Fancy. We're gonna go. That's yeah. extremely fancy. Yeah, it's 15 minutes from the crib. There's a bar we like called Guppies. 
and it's like a little shitty old man bar. Damn, see you guys, yeah, see you place. guys at Guppies tomorrow yeah, night. You guys at, well, well tomorrow during the day, we dropped the kids go to school <laughs> at eight forty-five. Is Guppies right? on the corner? Yeah, 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 I know where that is. So eight forty-five, the kids go to school. You're gonna see how fucked up you can get before school. Before ends? we've had to pick them up. Yeah, we're, I mean, not gonna see. We're gonna get fucked up before the school ends. Uh, <laughs> it's Tiffany's birthday, you know, and. A couple years ago, I forget what it was. It was like it was either her birthday or it was like um, maybe it was our anniversary, and we didn't do nothing. Mm. And we we're sitting there, we're like, "Yo, let's never have this shit happen again. Let's never not fucking do the shit we want to do on these fucking days." You know, uh, fuck it. We're taking off. We're gonna enjoy this shit while we can, and and that's it, dude. I took off on a Wednesday. Mike hit me up. I was like, "This is perfect. I'm off the next day." And that's it. I'll see you motherfuckers at Guppies tomorrow, dude. Damn. <laughs> yeah, the sushi. That somebody just said the sushi bowl rolls in at like four at Guppies. I don't fuck with sushi, but what's that mean? Know, there's a dude who like rolls up at like four and starts making sushi over there. Yeah, I mean I don't cool. need that shit, but it's a good place. Somebody said that in there in the chat. Oh, Guppies, yeah. got it. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's fish. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I didn't put that together. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> now, do you think you'll set up shop at Guppies all day, or are you gonna travel? Nah, we won't move from there. Um, dude, we've been going in. We were like uh, daytime regulars over there. Once a month, say I get done early before the kids get off the bus, we'll shoot over there, and they got decent food, man. They yo, mm -hmm. they chop the pickles up or something. There's like a, it's like a, fucking pickle paste. <laughs> Shit is banging. So <laughs> we're over there just getting cups of chopped pickles with our food. That's 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 fine dining compared to uh, my anniversary is on Sunday. Oh, what are you gonna do? As per tradition, we will be eating Taco Bell in our living room. <laughs> yes. oh, that's what we do. But traditions are great, bro. Bro, I mean, when you get married, when you're yeah. poor, some of that stuff's gonna right. stick around forever. You know, it's not all steak and whatever. If you guys get diarrhea at the same time, you're just gonna sit in the tub. Oh yeah, that's gonna be <laughs> us like in Ghost. I'm gonna be sitting behind. <laughs> <We're gonna> be... <laughs> just rubbing her belly, oh, <laughs> trying to get it all out. My love, my love. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. 14 years married on Sunday. Oh my really god! Got... Congrats, buddy. Isn't that beautiful? That is. Shut up, Ender. <laughs> <laughs> Damn that that is no MJ's uh MJ MJ's the best. She's she seriously is number one. I'm not just kidding when I say that. I can't, I like when I was a kid, I thought even even as early as like grade school, like fake girlfriends, I was just like, oh dude, being attached to a girl is the worst shit in the world. It's I thought it was a, and I grew up in like a Catholic neighborhood. I thought it was a game of like finding the woman who would take the longest to completely destroy your nerves and until the point where you just wanted to kill yourself. I thought I looking at all the grown-ups around me, I was like, oh, okay. So you marry a lady, uh, the first lady who won't uh like hate your guts and then you uh, wait until she either gets fat or mean and then and then hap that happens when you're like 30 and then you just ride that out till you're 65 and then you get like if you can't get on disability you just like retire from the city with a pension or, or like some other bullshit job and then you just like drink and smoke until you die i thought that was like the only i thought that was like n humans like, you know how they study chimps and they all have kind of the same life? I thought that was human life. Yeah. So, Do you think it's becoming more prevalent? With MJ every it day. seems like more guys are realizing, like, oh, you can just find somebody you like and find somebody that's nice. Well, Do you think that's becoming well, more of the issue? Not than... only is that rare, but also you're not told that. I think I I definitely see a lot of dudes with bitch wives walking around and they're just like, yeah, she's fucking riding my ass again. It's like, yo, dude, get rid of her. You did it wrong the first time. Mm -hmm. That's when you're a kid, all your friends' moms look like like Italian dudes or fucking something. Fucking mean you know old. I mean? <laughs> like, like, I'm telling all your you friends' moms start to look like shit. <laughs> so when you're young, you're like, damn, like I'm going to be married to some fucking little bowling ball ass Bitch, Kenzie, Mrs. Kenzie, Kenzie, yeah, you it know? was mean old fat bitch headquarters. Yeah, fucking right. And then it you realize sucked. Times have changed. Bitches stay fit. Six <laughs> years in. <laughs> <laughs> I tell Tiffy all the time, keep this shit together, bro. I'll be gone. Mm. Heartbeat. Mm. Nah. <laughs> let her know. You gotta let her know. Maybe scream at her every once in a while. <laughs> Do you think your wives understand how fortunate they are? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Dude, Mary Jo told me that she wants me to start raising my voice. She said, I, I, maybe you don't get that, like, bothered by stuff, but I need you to start raising your voice. It's an issue for me. So now I just have to, like, and I'm, it's awkward. I'm like, now do I start yelling? I'll tell her, tell her to come over to my place and listen to me yell, Jamie. Yeah, I yell plenty. But, uh, yeah, dude, I think, 
I, I think, too, the older women get, the more they see the same kind of shit. Like, they could be sitting here having a conversation about husbands being mm. fat fucking dorks that work the same job. Yeah. And are shitty and stuff like that. Like, Oh, no, she's lucky, know. too. Yeah. I want to make that yeah, clear. Yeah, we, but we both, got, we both got lucky. It's it's the friendship thing, bro. You got to have some kind of, like, you got to still be able to do shit just you guys. And mm-hmm. that's, that's what keeps it good forever, you know what I mean? I got yeah. a bad bitch, and we like getting fucked up. Like, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, we might not live forever because of that. And we might have a DUI in our future or something like that. But those are, you just roll with the punches, you know what I mean? That's the shit that comes and goes, you know? You can't spell DUI without you and I. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yo, yo, and lo- yo, lo- love's forever. Weekends in jail are just weekends in jail. Like, no big deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do plumbing for so many like <laughs> top shot lawyers, bro. I'm out by tomorrow. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> if you guys, if if you get a DUI with your spouse, they should let you get locked up together. <laughs> oh, Bonnie and Clyde status. Mm-hmm. I like that. Oh, no, nah, I'm not man. watching them kids, dude. I, I'm taking the rap. I'm going to jail. I ain't getting stuck for a day with them by myself. Oh, Danny, I need an idea. I need a real dirt ball tattoo for MJ. I'm gonna get a dirt ball at Mary Jo tattoo. So I need you to start brainstorming. We have uh, five days. <laughs> I think you should go thugged out, Tweety. <laughs> yeah, like, like how nor- big? Entire back? <laughs> <laughs> Wildwood like boardwalk shirt, yeah. Tweety, bro. Oh, you dude, I'm I mean? thinking about Bugs Bunny wearing chains. <laughs> Tim, how <laughs> wet can you make your bun? <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. Let's go Wigger Looney Tunes. Or I mean, I could always go Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, but like the lines are all faded. It's just poorly done. You get you get bugs, she gets babs, all thug the fuck out. You know what I mean? <laughs> you think Warner Brothers ever foresaw being like the statement of Wigger love? You're saying, do you think Warner Brothers ever warned a brother? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the ideal. Like, if you become as a brand so ubiquitous that it's the only way Wiggers can communicate love to each other, mm-hmm. you. You're Coca-Cola. Yeah. <laughs> You're Warner Brothers. It's so funny that like you can instantly tell Wigger Bugs Bunny he's just a little bit sleepy. <laughs> like, he's perfect for them. <laughs> yeah, he's got those aftermarket eyelids on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they stance his eyes. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe that's what I'll do. What's up, Doc becomes a my man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Titty paw print tattoos. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, t- <laughs> my yeah, what if I made her get my footprint <laughs> on her side and it went from like her <laughs> knee all the way up to her armpit? <laughs> yeah, I'm almost certain my one ghetto ass scissor got paw prints up her leg. <sighs> she got man. her own lips on her neck. I got, yeah, they got some doozies where I live. That's because you got to love yourself. Yeah, you got to love yourself. <laughs> That's what's up. Tim, we just got tattoos the other day. Tim, got a lighthouse. Fucking, she always gets the fucking. Just she always gets the tattoos. lighthouse. Yeah. <laughs> She's got twelve lighthouse tattoos. Yeah. You hit up uh, my boy Tim Ta- or uh, Tom Taylor. Yeah, it's all. That's who I've been going to the last five, six tattoos I got. Tom, he so Tommy, Tom's the man. We know a lot of the same people from over there. Uh, Tom's the man. Yeah. You know, we know his his girl real well and shit like that. Ah, uh, Mary. Yeah. 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 yeah, awesome. yeah. Uh, Black Vulture Gallery. That's where yeah. Tim will be getting his Sweetie Bird tattoo. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm so. going. I'll let the cat out of the bag for the bubs, dude. So that's my next one. Tom's drawing up. I got a. I'm getting Bernie from Weekend of Bernie's. Like fucking with the arrow <laughs> through the head. Yeah, Bernie Lomax, baby. I got so much dumb shit. I got a curly fry on my leg from Wildwood. I got. Uh, I got so many stupid tattoos. At this point, yeah. whatever I get doesn't fucking matter. So, Tom's drawing up Bernie, and me and Tiffany got a date. She's gonna get Jonathan Silverman. No, so, and, <laughs> she got and hers. I'm, I'm gonna get mine. And, yeah, and, and Murph's is right there. Murph's is <laughs> the best fucking Italian food affiliate. In yeah, it's bar. funny that they yeah they ended up becoming that. Oh, I might yeah. get. I'm trying to get into restaurants. I want to start going to restaurants. What do you guys think of that? No, I'm, I'm in there, baby. Get your butt fixed first. Murph's is one of them. I, I want to go. Oh yeah, I gotta get my butt. Repaired. So we're getting tattoos and going to Murph's. I think the last Friday wanna, of the month in February. I want to try their Italian food. Yo, the uh, I'm a big burrata guy, dude. I'm a cheese guy. I'm getting older. I'm getting more sophisticated and shit. Mm-hmm. God, that shit was so fucking good. Ooh. One time we were there, we got a you know the ball of fucking cheese and a bust open with all the other cheese. Yeah. Now, are bad. you are you so immersed in like nice food that you can go to a place and be like, that wasn't that good? Nah, see, because I can still just eat hamburger helper. Like I, yeah, exactly. I still like sloppy joes is straight with me, you know. Right. So I just you know. I I got a few bucks. I like eating nice shit. I, I like could have Kraft mac and cheese and Stouffer's yeah. stuffing as my entire meal every day of my life. 
So if I go to a restaurant, I go, someone brought me food. Like I can't, yeah. I can't ever be like, eh, it's overrated, dude. It's too hip- yeah, I, too hipster now. I would never trash a restaurant or, or nothing like that either. Like as far as food sucking, like because you know, you, it's fucking like you said. I'm sitting here, somebody's serving me food. Like I would never not tip a a waitress or a waiter. Oh, the food sucks. Like somebody's bringing me food. I feel Obviously. happy and privileged to be sitting. In I would never place, return. You know? uh, plate of crabs that I had already finished and yeah. so that <laughs> there was a hair in it. Rearranged the shell so yeah. it still looks like it's in crab form. I, I would never say my hypnotic wasn't strong enough. <laughs> These are things I would never do uh, in my life. I've been <laughs> on a real hypnotic kick, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we've been drinking hypnotic a lot. Mm. Uh, every almost every occasion our boy Kelso you're, shows up with a bottle of hypnotic he even had, Ivani Walker blue you know, <laughs> he, he, he even had hypnotic freeze pops mm. and they were actually fucking good boy they made your throat tingle a little bit you can only get those in halfway houses I think yeah, <laughs> them Jones were banging dude they were definitely good gross I've been on a big hypnotic kick how are your feet feeling <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you enjoying those before you get them cut off yeah <laughs> No, so I got I just did blood, dude. I'm uh I'm good. It's part there of the, no diabetes. It's part of the doctor's checklist yeah. now. Uh, Tubbs, uh, how many hypnotic popsicles have you been eating? Hmm. <laughs> You're gonna have to cut that back to, yeah. to three a day. So I <laughs> Dalton one time. This kid is getting so funny. I mean, I don't know if I'm rubbing off on him, but this motherfucker's hilarious. But we were at a party not that long ago, and this dude was missing half of his foot. And Dalton went right up to him, like, "What happened to your foot, bro?" He was like, "I drank too much soda." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy's dead now. Right. <laughs> but at that time, he was just missing a foot. Did the diabetes finish him off? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's Something crazy. Did. You only yeah. got half a foot off, and then you die. Yeah. Like, you got to imagine, like, they probably tried to take the knee. That's what, just yeah. let, me, let me die with all my toes if the end's coming. <laughs> <laughs> like, that shit's around the corner. If I'm not going to death's door, why take the toes, dude? You're going to torture me on the way out? <laughs> yeah, how Fuck many that. phone calls do you think Mountain Dew gets a day for lost feet, <laughs> yeah. lost toes? <laughs> I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I always knew I'd die with all my toes on. Dude, you're Doc Hollandaise. <laughs> <laughs> now seems like a great time to thank our sponsor. This episode of Dad Meat is presented to you by Manscaped. <sighs> Tubbs, I don't know about you, brother, but my shit's looking pretty good these days. Uh, always. I love trying to shove this whole fucking cock into his mouth without any. But you got a big day know, tomorrow, so yeah. I'm glad you're already yeah. shorn and looking good. And Keep it short. Good. I can, like I can smell that thing from here, man. I, I might nibble on that a little bit before you get going. No, but sure. go to manscaped.com, use promo code FATBIRD. You can get all the good shit that makes my balls, Tubbs balls, Tim's balls, the whole squad's balls looking good these days. Manscaped.com, promo code FATBIRD. Treat yourself and whoever's got to blow you. Also, if you're struggling, I would suggest going to betterhelp.com <laughs> and use promo code FATBIRD. I benefited from BetterHelp starting last summer. It, uh, it was vital in helping me turn a fucking rough period around, and I can't say enough about what I received there. I did shit. It was, I set it up every Friday, talking to a very nice lady, and uh, they make it easy to, to video conference with people. You can talk over the phone. You can text message, whatever's easiest, more, most convenient for you. But the best part is if you've ever had a real fucking dickhead therapist in real life and you feel like you're locked into a marriage, this is not the case with BetterHelp. They make it very easy to switch out your therapist. If you just don't jive, you don't need to give any kind of fucking reasons. You just do it. So go to betterhelp.com, promo code FATBIRD. Also, check out True Classic. If you're a little thick like me, they got the clothes that you need. They have all kinds of cool athletic wear. I wear mostly the T-shirts, and they fit me like a goddamn glove. Go to trueclassic.com, promo code FATBIRD. Make yourself look nice. Tim, what else do we have? Danny, do we have anything else? Uh, Bluetooth? Oh, yeah, we got Bluetooth. So if you're into getting hard, deal. We're, we're, we're a bunch of getting hard guys here. Every now and again, I l- need a little bit of juice. I feel like fucking Bernie Lomax sometimes when it comes to getting hard. And I need my boys to prop me up. I need a little propping up. So I go to Bluetooth when I have that issue. Bluetooth.com, promo code FATBIRD. You're going to be stunned at how hard your meat gets when you try this shit. I know they don't want us to make promises with this product, but I swear to God, anytime I take a blue true, my fucking dick feels like it's going to burst out of my dick skin and my ears are fucking glowing, which is probably not good for my heart, but I like fucking. So sometimes I have to do it. So go to bluetooth.com, promo code FATBIRD. Die fucking, man. If you got to go out, go out with all, with your, all toes, your toes, <laughs> none of your nuts. Up in the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. dude I, I'm still rocking like Manscaped 
one, like the first drawing that came out. This thing, I'm wearing I mean, the drawers right now. Pretty fucking adorable, bro. I got the same the same thing that they sent us two years ago. I still use. Yeah, I'm still rocking that thing, dude. I like. I gotta keep the wings back, dude. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? <laughs> That's where I get. I'm I'm heavy on the wings. If I let it go, my hair will cover my nuts. Completely, yeah, you know. That's tough stuff, man. <laughs> That's a, that's old Russian guy mm -hmm. on a segment on HBO's Real Sex stuff. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. tiny meat, tiny meat gang. That's the kind of Jews I'm related to. Them Russian Jews. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like that fat pilot in Top Gun. You're heavy on the wings. You're heavy on the wings. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Are you flying or am I? Um, can I tell you guys about my my conspiracy theory? Uh, I would love to hear the Paul brother. Pelosi. You guys are familiar with the Paul Pelosi situation. Oh, uh, I right? love it, baby. Who hasn't been there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. I've been saying from the beginning, and, you know, this has been a, actually, this has been dismissed as a right-wing conspiracy and uh, kind of like, uh, um, how should I say this, homophobic take, mm -hmm. but he was definitely porking this fat loser. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And I think the video, I haven't seen anyone else stating this exact theory, so I just want to, I want to, I want to put this to you guys if I show you the video of Paul Pelosi's hammer attack. Mm -hmm. Tell me tell me if you think this doesn't make sense. Now, I will remind you, uh, his attacker, uh, what was his name, something, De Pape? <laughs> De Pape? And I'll remind you, the, my my initial thesis was De Pape wanted De Pee Pee. <laughs> Dog, you sound like fucking De like the crab from Little Mermaid. Or De Pape. <laughs> Under Pape. Um... Yeah, the Pape wanted the PP, and I think the video kind of, to me, completely uh, confirms my theory. Um, they they said that uh, first of all, they they were saying, and maybe this is I just didn't pay attention enough. But do you remember in the initial report? He was he was in the house holding. He was I think he was in Paul Pelosi's bed saying, "Where's Nancy?" and threatening him with a hammer. Yeah, that was yeah. Now he gets knocked completely unconscious by spoiler alert. The hammer strike, the two hammer strikes put him completely out. He's snoring. There's no way he told a reporter or even the police that this guy said, where's Nancy? That part is completely fabricated. This this video proves that. Danny, do you have the video? Okay, full screen this. This is the cop showing up. Now, it might look like Paul Pelosi answers the door. However, there's a drink in his free hand. One, The other hand's on the hammer. And he's not wearing pants. Well... <laughs> I, well, I know what two guys look like this, who just got caught fucking. And that's, uh, that's yeah, it. if you ask me, this is not sleeping attire. I don't care how old you are. Nah. This is bad boy sleepover attire. <laughs> this is absolutely yeah. not. Here we go. And I'm sure people have seen this, but I want to I want to go over this. Yeah, who is it? Uh, gay Pizza Hut with the delivery for <laughs> Paul and the pee pee. <laughs> DePape says, who's Nancy? Oh, yes. Uh, how you doing? How are you? What's going on, man? <laughs> Smile big for the camera. Drop the hammer. <laughs> um, nope. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. What is Sorry, going on right now? I'm not getting an answer. I'm probably going to get an answer. Ow, bro. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Take this back, Danny. And if you could play this, if you could play this in slow motion, I want to, I want to play, I want to start with the door opening. Cause I got this. I think this is. I think this is exactly what happened. So pause it. Yeah, pause it before before this right goes there. down. Number one. What? Someone. I saw someone else point out in this screenshot that they're both smiling. Here's here's what probably happened. <laughs> Pelosi was out cruising. De Pape wanted de pee pee. He goes, why don't we come back to my house? We'll have a couple drinks. We'll we'll snort whatever is in that vial that you have on your body. Um, they're saying that this guy's like a right wing like uh, conspiracy theorist. This guy's actually a nudism activist, as was revealed by his uh, incarcerated ex girlfriend or wife or whatever. Um, so they come back. They're fooling around. I don't know if if Paul Pelosi is actually the one that calls nine one one. Maybe he is, or maybe they made it sound like that they were just doing like a, a check because they they were something or I don't know. The the story's not straight. Now let's say he does that. Paul Pelosi does call nine one one. I think he calls nine one one at the point where he goes, "Oh man, this fucking homeless guy I was about to bend over my couch is a little bit unhinged." We've seen this happen a million times. Brendan Price says, "Like two raccoons running out of a dumpster." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Yeah, they were having a good time. That they answered the door. They're both smiling. This guy's going. I can't believe me and Paul Pelosi are about to have you know the forbidden moment, the the sweet nectar of being secretly gay at the highest levels. Thank God you guys are here. This <laughs> this guy broke in wearing my monogrammed robe. <laughs> now look, what I think, in order, I I think this was an act of love. Mm-hmm. I think the hammer yeah, blows right. were right. this. Now slow this down. What's going on? Yeah. How could you call He's the cops? Scrambling. On? He's going, oh no, Paul, our our forbidden love is about to be exposed oh, to the world. And he goes, Audible, and attacks him and goes, uh, I'm actually an attacker. I'm not I'm not here to do gay stuff. I was here to kill him for Tr- Donald Trump. Oh, shit. <laughs> and he's he, in his head, he's like in his head, there's like uh Leonard Cohen's playing. All he's hearing is Hallelujah. Because he's like, I will sacrifice myself for you, Paul. They're going to send me to federal prison, but they're never going to discover our love. You and your wife can go on insider trading, making $250 million a month every time a stock goes down. And you guys know about it four weeks ahead of the rest of the public. Your secret safe with me, Paul. Give me your fucking hand. Give me your fucking hand. Look at that butt crack, bro. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Slap ball. Oh no. Starch team. No, he didn't break in. They they were he told him to come in through the back because if I open the front door, the neighbors will know. That's what happened. Yeah, it's definitely a crime of passion. Oh, was that the guy reviewing the video? <laughs> no, he didn't break in. That was actually he said, Don't please don't come in through the front door. I don't want any of my neighbors to know that I'm having gay sex with a homeless guy tonight. Please. How nuts is it? To have gay affairs in your home that you share with your wife. I mean, they're rich but people. You have to imagine this guy is a billion dollar. He's a billionaire who, to get his kicks, he has to like chug stem cells from like uh, immigrant children. You know what I mean? His family has like, if at this point to feel anything, you have to press infants through a mesh filter uh. and then just scrape the pink mist off the bottom. And, Oh, what flavored children's stem cells are these? These are guatemelan. <laughs> and, and Nancy's out shaking that big ass titties probably all over town. Dude. I mean, Nancy got some bomb. But to me, like I, I think, would I think that's the the, the the great revelation in all of this. And I didn't know that she had these titties until Nobody recently, knew. dude. And I don't know. It might have popped around the same time as this, as their gay husband story did. But seeing those fucking cans, yeah. just flying around on vacation, destabilizing. Dude, how did it's it's like I remember like when everybody like did you see that remember that video of Trump interacting with the children at Christmas time? It was so sweet and endearing, and it's the most sweet and endearing you'd ever see him. And it was like, why don't you show these more often, these moments? Yeah. And I felt the same way about, about Nancy Pelosi's TV video. Yeah. Like, you know how much goodwill you <laughs> can <laughs> cause with these things? <laughs> Something about some big old freckled up ass titty I know, boy that drives yeah. me wild. And I like it too that she's a real fucking bitch. Oh, she's that a bitch. That adds to how hot an old That's, lady is. Dude, I look at everybody that I see on TV or anywhere, anybody in life is like, how are they to put a toilet in for, right? Like, mm-hmm. how are they as a fucking what do you, What's your read on Paul Pelosi? Uh, Paul Pelosi's complaining. Paul you Pelosi's look like his trying, type, too. Nah, he's, oh, he, yeah. nah listen, I'm, yeah. if yeah, I'm any guy's type, it ain't that with fucking a scumbag, dude, all right? No, it's, it's all the listen. way in the back of the toilet. Yeah. You have to really reach. <laughs> Paul Pelosi's the kind of guy who tries to get out of beating you for the fucking bill. You know, mm-hmm. but Nancy bosses you around a little bit. Like Nancy really turns you to fuck on while you're there. Nancy really drives you. Uh, are you gonna wear <laughs> your boots in the house yeah, the whole exactly. time? <laughs> you know, yeah. Nancy's Nancy's asking you to take a trash out and shit, and you're like, "All right, titties, I'll take that trash out." You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what plumbers would do. You you swing some bags in their face when you know what I mean. <laughs> you show up with them them cans out. What's the most forthcoming <laughs> a customer has been towards you? <laughs> no, nah, so. Listen, I if I go home and if I even remotely think some chick, even the thought even crossed her mind that she wanted to suck me off, I text my wife right away and tell her mm. I'm coming home and, and some chick tried fucking me at work and I'm coming right home. I want nothing to do oh, with it. Oh, you're saying there's steam coming out of your ears. Yeah, like, I, like I, I, I avoid it. Like just I, so you know, yeah, this woman just, looked at me too long. Yeah, exactly. I didn't like it. <laughs> but I, I, had, I had a hipster chick... One time, like, straight up robe and, you know, some fucking snort Richmond fucking dirt ball, straight up in her robe and really, like, nothing on her to robe. And I couldn't believe she walked up the steps right in front of me, like, shit out. Like, I, listen, I'm more about the money than I am than the fucking pussy. I got the pussy P-word, at home. Yeah. So 
I look at the floor. Like if a woman walks up the steps in front of me, I'm trained. I look at my feet. Nobody's going to catch me. I mean, I do. I pay insurance in case I do sexually harass somebody. I got a little insurance. <laughs> I'm, co I'm covered for at least one claim if I fucking shook my fucking bird at oh, somebody. They're actually once. sitting in a van outside of the building just, monitoring this right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I got it. I got a little insurance. You're committing sexual assault it. insurance fraud. Yo, the, the one dude who works for me got both got his, his nipples pierced. Neck brace. Yo, the one dude who works for me got both his nipples pierced. He's like 53. Yeah. So when they came and they were like, "Yo, do you need like sexual assault insurance?" I was like, "Yeah, I might." You know what I mean? Yeah. That guy's got his fucking nipples pierced. That guy's need. That guy needs hammer I'm attack just insurance. Saying, yo. <laughs> But still, you know, I, I, I steer clear. But, yeah, I, I've had a couple girls, you know, and they're always, like, ugly as shit, too. Like, it's never like I get some, come on, I walk in, I get some bad bitch, like, hey, Mr. Plumber, man, like, that shit don't happen. Yeah, if you're it's opening some, the road yeah. for a guy that touches poop all day. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I, I get some down-on-her-luck fucking pig. I've had a couple of those, so I ain't fucking them, you know? It's got to be tough, though. Like, when, when you're as good at your profession as you are, like, I would want customers to, to go ahead and try the toilet before I left the house. Yeah, so that's, dude, I... All you got to do, you let me in your grandma's house to fix her toilet. There's going to be pictures of me going up the steps next time you go there. Motherfucker. <laughs> like, I will fall in love with your grandmother more than anything. Like, you don't got to worry about your wives or nothing like that. But, you know, it, uh, that's the whole point. You, you you want people to love the experience when they call call a plumbing company and he showed up. and Because well, it's so sweetheart. stressful. You call a plumber because yeah. something bad's happening. You know, and that's that's where I, I nail it. Um, that's why I nail it. And again, shout out to the bubs, dude, because the bubs have been getting me work. This thing, people, I think sometimes people message me and they don't realize, like, yo, I'm not a fucking comedian, dude. dude I'm booked. just a loser plumber. Like, I don't know how I made it on this podcast, but here I am, right? And people hit me up, like, yo, you got merch for sale, dude? And I'm like, no, I don't sell merch. Like, do you need a fucking water heater? I got water heaters for sale. I got toilets. You know, I mean, dude? if they're reaching out over, like, messages or DMs or something, let's not make them sound like backwoods retards. Yeah, well, <laughs> These are very nice people. Just... They just... Is what they appreciate, and you've got a cool logo, uh, and your whole thing is yeah, cool. But it, it's you still got an American flag on it, and it's not, you know, there's no blue line in it. Oh, so the other ones had a blue line, but then somebody, one of my boys was like, yo, when are you going to take that Nazi flag off? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we went with the American flag. I, the blue was flag is hot right now. Was it Travis oh, that Yes, it was yes, Travis. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, Travis he goes, one. thanks for the shirt with the Nazi flag on it. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to our boy fucking T-Bomb, dude. Yeah. So me and Tim got That's tons of guy. mutual friends. We got tons of uh, boys, and, and me and Tim. Dude, Brian Kennedy, hanging. convicted first-degree murder. Who's this? Brian Kennedy, Northeast High School. He went uh, with us. Yeah, yeah, bro. Murdered his wife at Wawa. Mike, he's been found guilty, first-degree murder. Uh, he's officially a candidate for Little Stinkers. T's and P's, baby. <laughs> no, I mean, well, I mean, he did shoot her with an AR-15. <laughs> We were kind of that was dude he walked into the Wawa or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoked yeah. her? Yeah. Yeah, that that was a very fast trial. I didn't get to, I thought it was going to yeah, be dragged out, and I was going to go to the case. courthouse and make a, you know, a vine about it or whatever, but nope, uh, it's over. Open and shut case. He definitely blew her head off, and he's going to at least life in prison without parole. I, I noticed that he went to Chili's as his last meal before he went in and did it. What would your last meal be? Is that true? He took his son to Chili's. Oh, well, maybe it was his son's favorite restaurant. Ben, where would I take you if it was, the, if it was my last day on Earth? <laughs> Muay Thai class. Where? The kitchen. The ki I, would, I would cook a meal. Aww. Yeah, good answer, bro. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah, I would, I would cook a meal. I would probably, I would spend all day preparing a meal that, like, everyone kind of liked. And I would be like, wow, this is such a decadent treat. I can't believe <laughs> I made this. And everyone else would be like, yeah, this is pretty good. Dad, why are you taking the batteries of the carbon monoxide detectors? <laughs> Never mind. Eat your food. <laughs> you don't like it? I'm so, you don't like braised short rib? Oh, fine. Fucking pine saw short ribs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did Finish great? your Windex. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you're always going to get caught if you try poisoning somebody. Idiots. Yeah. They always do that shit. Yeah. How can you get away with it? I mean, I think yeah. th there's no way to get away with no. killing somebody now. You're the last person oh. I would tell how to get away with. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be totally <laughs> random acts of violence, I think. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you get away with a dozen if you're good. But the days of, like, jumping out of the courthouse window and killing four more college kids are over. Like, that shit is done. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, there's just too much shit going on. Mm -hmm. But if you just, like, randomly... Like, look, who's the last one was that... Dude shooting out of the trunk, the sniper dude. Ooh, that was spooky. And, and he plugged what eight, nine, and they were like, "You ain't gonna shoot no kids." The next day, he shot a kid. He kept him guessing, you know. Mm. So, <laughs> but that was like random, no reason from a distance. But other than that, I mean, today, uh, ladies are getting away with it. 
isn't uh what was her name? Not Jody Arias. Uh, the other lady, sexy lady. Oh, uh, all sexy. Relatively, yeah, for the crime, yeah. What was the lady that killed her kids? Uh, Casey Anthony. Casey Anthony. She's partying in yeah. West Tampa or something. Oh, right? she's Isn't having she? the time of her life, baby. So I think that's the ladies have it figured out. Ladies yeah. are they they they're taking over. Yeah, she is bad as a motherfucker. Too, mm -hmm. Still looks great, man. Boys wow. are getting caught all the time, though. There's there's yeah. no getting away with it. You're toast, dude. Yeah. If you start crying on, she didn't even testify in her own defense. But I was about to say that if you test, that if you cry on the witness stand, there's got to be at least one guy on that jury that'd be like, "Come on, a girl's crying. Like, do we really want to do this?" <laughs> and she's stop, hot. dude. She's upset. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Just football throwing a box of tissues at her. Mm. What's I told? I got a, I got an uncle stinker, dude. I told Mike I need yeah. to come on little stinkers. My uncle snuffed his wife, fucking washed her off in a tub, put to, drove his daughter to school. Oh man, fucking drove. My mom won't buy a Saturn because he put her in the trunk of a Saturn. I remember when Saturns were hot the car, and we were on a car lot one time. My mom was like, "Well, I can't buy that car." I was like, "What do you mean?" She was like, "You know the whole uh, Uncle Allen thing, you know." So, but it, that's the best is he he drove her to a farm, hitchhiked home. And it was just like, I don't know where she is. <laughs> you know what I mean? And eventually, it's just the she got around. out of the car and started yeah. running. And then, I don't know. so he uh, he might be getting out. This was like '95 or something like that. He might be getting out. They said his uh, my my uncle married this. Do you uncle. think he would be a podcast guest, dude? I, he might. Um, I haven't seen oh him in a God. while. <laughs> Dude, we'll we see how things here? have changed for him. Can we get you know? I would give him my entire share of that month's <laughs> yeah. Patreon for Little Snickers if he came on. And what's funny, he's just like a he's just a Jew. He's just like this Jewy guy <laughs> named Alan. <laughs> and you would never think he'd be capable of such. What do you want? Event. I should cut her head yeah, off. That's what it was. Yeah, dude. And he fucking you know emptied the fucking wheel on her boy. Yeah, let them all rip. But was it, it revealed what uh, brought it about? No. So for years he was just like always like I didn't fucking do it. And finally, my uncle, my other uncle, lives down in Myrtle Beach, my Uncle Harry, and uh, he married some crazy woman who's, like, from the South that never saw a toll booth before. And somehow, <laughs> some way, she became, like, pen pals with my murderer uncle, and they, like, send letters back and forth, right? This bitch is obviously nuts. She's cool as hell. She's obviously crazy. And, um, yeah, apparently he could get out uh, re soon, and I got to... I got a whole third floor. Did you say? <laughs> just, he didn't kill nobody I know. That lady, R.I.P. Pam, she wasn't nice. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, you know, she wasn't nice. She was mean. You're going to thank kids. him for it. You're I'm not thanking him. Listen, if he did his, everybody deserves a second Paid chance. Paid his debt to society. You know what I mean? Yeah. Out, yeah. Free Allen, baby. But, <laughs> yeah, he was all right, dude. Yeah, if anybody could draw a free Allen graphic, that would be yeah. awesome. He was all right. Yeah, we'll meet him in the parking lot. It's funny, small Welcome world. Home. Uncle Ellis, right? So Ellis, mm -hmm. I, I got my my foot in the in in, in the Jew stronghold of Castor Gardens in the nineties, right? Because my family lived over there, and my grandfather owned a store on the corner. I, go figure. I, a buddy of mine, that's his uncle Ellis, so now I'll call him Uncle Ellis forever. He also used to go into my grandfather's store when he's a kid and shit. All this stuff, big and bringing bubs together, boy. Oh, well, eventually you know? there's not going to be a connection missed for yeah. anybody. Everyone's going to yeah. be wired into the same social network, but like in real life, not just you know via algorithms. This is cool stuff that we're building. Yeah, fuck right, dude. The Tubbs, struggle keeps. Is there going. anything you want to talk about before we go to the Patreon? Uh, the plumber protects the health of the nation. Again, stop flushing flushable wipes. You're fucking crushing the sewer system. Um, and let me tell you something before we go to the Patreon, all the fucking bubs that reach out, homeboy shouted me out the other day, dude, if I'm 1% the reason one of you motherfuckers becomes a plumber and goes out and gets mad fucking bread like I am, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't really think you realize how big of a smile that puts on my face when these young guys that listen to this shit and hit me up and are like, yo, I'm going in business for myself. I'm chasing a dream, blah, blah, blah. Cause you're so fucking retarded that you made it make sense. <laughs> That shit just really, I mean, makes me happy. Any fucking questions, anything, I will talk to any of you fucking guys. If I don't answer for a few days, it's because I put my head down for a few days and get some plumbing done. But, yo, know, I, I, if I could be 1% the reason anybody in here gets their fucking life together, uh, I, I, it just brings a giant fucking smile to my face, dude. Brother, there's nobody like you. you. Know. Damn, that's beautiful. And nice. I appreciate you guys. You two motherfuckers. Well, likewise, man. You know, like this, putting this whole shit together, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. dude. We're trying to have fun. I love it. Love it. Timbo. Damn gang. Um, 
uh, as always, dude, please please come hang out with us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tim Butterly. It's, uh, it's really cooking. It's a really great time. I mean, the I don't want to talk about the metrics, but I will tell you that the metrics are probably above where I would have hoped they'd ever be. Um, but also... I, I'm going to start uh, starting this week. Um, I have uh, a stream that I did with Dear Sweet Noah, who you would know from Stoner Dads or Matt and Shane Super Podcast. We did a stream. We did a, a Sunday morning coffee stream together a couple of weeks back, and now I'm I'm going to start. I have a couple of things banked. And I'm going to start releasing them on YouTube because maybe people think Twitch is too gay to even visit. So I'll I'll throw them on YouTube. It's uh, I think it's might be YouTube.com/slash Tim Butterly. I don't know. I don't use my YouTube channel, but I'm going to throw them on there so you can check it out maybe think about come joining us at the very least you can enjoy something that you would have missed otherwise um then obviously check out stoner dads and um come see us at magoobies in timonium maryland on 420 and then the following week 428 mike and i'll be at laugh it up poughkeepsie um and we're very excited for about both of those and honestly if it's not a total pain in the ass to promote these shows and sell them out then it's only going to make us add more dates and more places more quickly um so just do all that stuff that i just said thank you before we go, I just want to let everybody know I'm giving away this this signed custom on Perks Bat from the boys at Victus. This fucking thing is You're like, part of an evidence trail. <laughs> it's a fucking work of art. And I'm giving this away to everybody who orders by Valentine's Day. So if you go to onperks.com, that's O N P E R C S dot com, buy a copy. You're eligible to get this bag. Did you say you're giving that away to everybody who pre orders by Valentine's Day? Fuck it, I might. What, I'm, I'm going to have 3,000 of these I, made. I think that's what you said, but what did you mean? I mean that I'm going to pick one there order from everyone that has ordered between the start of sales up until Valentine's Day, and I'm going to message you and let you know that you won. I might do like a live stream or something to do it. One of a kind. It's it's truly beautiful. Like the people at Victus make such incredible bats that like I wouldn't be surprised if over 50% of the major leaguers are using them right now, including Bryce Harper, fucking Fernando Fa- Tatis, all yeah. the fucking big dogs in and MLB Mike Rainey. Now Vegas your name back. is in there, Mike Rainey. Yep, look at that, and it's got Chrysler 300 at the bottom, baby. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> see that. Yeah. <laughs> this is a damn. Bat, dude. You need a baby blue Chrysler yeah. 300, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's time to stop fucking around. I know, baby. I, I saw one. I took my son to basketball last weekend, and I parked right next to one, and I was like, dude, my belly started getting nervous because I want it so fucking bad, and I'm getting so close now. I think I'm at about 3,000 copies sold, so I got 2,000 to go. I'd say get it now. Get it now. Get it on perks wrapped. I got to delay myself. I know. I, I've, I've, friends of mine are edging men. Yeah. And I'm edging myself for this Chrysler understood, 300, understood. so I'm going to wait until I got my 5K sold. Yeah. But good idea. on top of that, too, I want to thank the both of you because if you bought the fucking uh, print copy of On Perks, you know what that is. But the audio version of On Perks is truly a work of art entirely due to what everybody made it. Guys like Tubbs, Tim, fucking McCusker, Shaner, McKeever. You, you changed the game with that idea. The whole squad changed it. And it's just truly a work of art. And it was just, it was so much fun. It was so funny. There were so many endearing moments that I can't recommend picking that up enough. So you can get that as part of the On Perks bundle, or you could just get the audio book on its own. So onperks.com, you could check that out and uh, treat yourself to something nice. And I can't wait to pick somebody to give this fucking bat. And you can do whatever you want with it. You can kill somebody with this thing. <laughs> You may kill somebody. Not you, wait. You can, brother. You may. I don't know. I mean, you can. One of those is better. If you're the kind of guy giving away an all perks bat, you're going to say you can kill somebody. You could, this. yeah, for sure. Or you can hit 16 home runs in your fucking Sunday league with your boys, dude. Oh baby, you know. I got to use some of the Victus bats two weeks ago, and these fucking babies. Whew. Yeah, I'm terrible. I get afraid of the ball when it's coming at me. I go. Ah. You would do good there because we went to the batting cage, and that was a little. We went to Burr Home. For a first shot at fucking ripping some dingers, but they're doing soft toss at Vic. Oh, uh, okay, so yeah, I'll fucking smash a couple of Rip those. them into the fucking... Probably hit them on the roof, mm-hmm. maybe, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Have to send up a Puerto Rican guy to go climb up and throw them back down. Oh, oh one other thing I want to mention is <laughs> we're doing the, uh, the Wigger breakfast at Shady Maple the day after the Eagles win the Super Bowl on Monday, February 13th at 7.30 a.m. Go there. You fucking pay when you get there. You can meet us. We'll be there in full wigger attire. We wigger in out, yeah. Everybody's wigged out when we go to this fucking thing. We're wigging. But go to Shady Maple, 7.30 a.m., the day after the Eagles win the Super Bowl. We'll all be there. We will meet you inside, and we're going to fucking carry on like we just lost custody of our kids. That is that is truly the extent of the plan. That is it. Yep. We're trying to see how many dudes we can get to wig out 
and go to Shady Maple. The Monday morning following the Super Bowl at 7.30 a.m. Dude, it's like a quarter mile of buffet, dude. It's yeah. the longest There's fucking nothing buffet. like Shady Maple. And, and it's mirrored. N- so yeah. it's the you, you have two access points for anything that you want on either side. There's, this this ahead is ahead. hilarious. I looked at my schedule on my phone last night. I'm sitting with Tiffy. I'm scrolling through. And I'm like, dude, why the fuck do I have off on Monday after the Super Bowl? And she's like, you're an idiot. Like, Because I just put in the schedule no tubs, right? So that they, you know, she, she knows the chicken work knows. I don't knows want no tubs. tubs. Yeah. tubs is a guy who can't get no <laughs> pussy from me. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> you know, so I just found out why I took off that fucking Monday. And it's to go to the Shady I love Maple. Tubs. And now I'm going to put tubs, Shady uh, Maple. Dude, there's back. a video that a guy made recently. You guys know like the food guy, Mark Weens? Absolutely not. Really cool YouTube channel. It's Mark, W-I-E-N-S. He did one recently at Shady Maple, and it really captures the essence of what Shady Maple is. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. So, uh, again, real quick note. The reason it's a weekday is because you have to go on a weekday. We chose the Monday after the Super Bowl because a lot of people already call out of work the Monday after the Super Bowl. It's 7.30 in the morning because if you get there 8 o'clock or later, you're not getting breakfast, dude. You're going to be standing in line outside in the fucking it's gonna be five degrees but yeah google the name it's shady maple just like it sounds and it's it will be a day to remember it could just be me and you dressed like wiggers it by could ourselves be, but it'll that's be a fine. day to remember nonetheless that's fine it, it won't be bub bubs are showing out i plan right. on going but i i think you're gonna have a couple hundred people there that'd be that'd be hilarious and the shady maple's gonna that'd be hilarious. not know what to do with themselves dude aside from the, the trash buffet, mob <laughs> yeah. dude they got a fucking gift shop that sells anything and everything that you could possibly want they sell fucking knives dude, there that's where i got dude the every animal on a shirt like if you want a nerdy fucking mountain shirt mm-hmm. i mean every kid's name on every fucking little uh you know license plate and shit the store underneath of this place you could spend the rest of the day in that mm-hmm. motherfucker you know the shady Pure maple's class. awesome but just show up, pay at the front desk, meet us back there. I'll tell you what, if anybody wants to come dressed as Paul Pelosi and Mr. DePeepee, I will pay for those too. <laughs> it was DePape. DePape wanted DePeepee. <laughs> All right. Well, who's the right. poo-poo run? We're going to the Patreon. I'll see you over there. <laughs> wait, Thanks wait, for wait. Before we leave, I Love just you, want to say uh, shout out to my new intern, Ben. He worked the board the entire episode. Great job, Ben. And didn't fuck off a single switch. He did great. Damn. Thanks, Bob. You did it. I'm so proud of you. Great job. Let's do it again on the Patreon. Goodbye. Good job, Ben.